Elon Musk, the founder and chief executive at SpaceX, gave an update on the company's Starship rocket program February 10th in South Texas. With a full-sized Starship rocket standing nearly 400 feet tall behind him at SpaceX's Starbase test site, Musk discussed his vision for the human settlement of Mars. The Starship, the largest and most powerful rocket ever developed, is central to Musk's goal of sending people to the red planet. So it's been two years. Uh, since we had our first uh, Mark I rocket, um, and uh, a lot has happened since then. Musk first discussed the Starship program in 2016, several years after technical work began on the project. Then known as an interplanetary transport system, the rocket has undergone countless design changes over the last half decade, with changes in engine numbers and performance specifications, wing and aerosurface placements, and even the materials the rocket is made of. SpaceX eventually settled on stainless steel. But the objective has remained constant. Develop and fly a fully reusable rocket that can carry more cargo into space than any launcher in history, and then use it to establish a settlement on Mars. Musk believes it will take the delivery of around a million tons of cargo to the Martian surface to make a self-sustaining city a reality. Starship is capable of doing that. It's capable of, of, of getting, getting a million tons to the surface of Mars and creating a self-sustaining city. Um, and I think we should try to do that as soon as we can. Pulling off a Mars mission and then establishing a repeatable cadence of sorties to the red planet will require numerous launches of Starship tankers, crew and cargo transporters, and propellant depots. But SpaceX isn't exactly starting from scratch. The behemoth Musk showed off last week builds on the successes of SpaceX's Falcon rocket program, which pioneered reusability for a commercial launch vehicle. Starship will be fully reusable, which Musk calls the holy grail of rocketry. Its first stage and 33 main engines will return back to the launch pad for refueling and more missions. SpaceX calls the first stage the Super Heavy. The upper part is itself also called the Starship, serving as a rocket upper stage and a deep space transporter. It's also designed to land on a planetary surface, be it Earth, Mars, or the Moon, and then launch again. The, the costs will uh, improve significantly over time, so uh, because it'll take us a moment to achieve uh, full reusability and full and rapid reusability, um, we'll probably lose a few vehicles along the way. Um, you know, with uh, Falcon 9, I think it took us. 14 or 15 attempts to successfully land the first booster. Um, I don't think it'll take us that many with uh, Starship because we have that experience, uh, but it's uh, certainly not a sure thing that it'll work the first time. SpaceX's design is intended to make Starship launches routine and affordable, and each flight could carry more than 100 tons to low Earth orbit. Fast forward like two or three years from now, I, I think it's highly likely to be everything included, less, less than $10 million a flight for a 100 ton to orbit capability. And 100 tons to a useful orbit, not to a low orbit. To, to a low orbit, it would be 150 tons. So this, this is ridiculously good by, compared to everything else. SpaceX has tested prototypes of the Starship before, finally nailing the craft's tricky landing maneuver Next up on SpaceX's roadmap will be an attempt to launch the Starship into orbit. When that flight might happen partially hinges on regulatory approval from the Federal Aviation Administration, which is reviewing the impact of SpaceX's operations in South Texas on the local environment and nearby communities. Meanwhile, SpaceX is also racing to complete work on the rocket and its huge launch pad. I mean, I think we're uh, close to having the hardware ready to go. Um, so right now, I think we're, we're tracking to have the um, regulatory approval and hardware readiness around the same time, around the same, you know, ho hopefully, in a, you know, basically a couple months for, for both. If the FAA doesn't green light SpaceX for full-scale Starship launches from Texas, Musk said Kennedy Space Center's historic Launch Complex 39A in Florida offers a backup location. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I am optimistic that we will get approval. Um, for, um, like, I think they're, objectively, I think this is not uh, something that will be um, 
harmful to the environment. We've obviously uh, flown uh, the ship several times um, and done you know multiple landings and you know, takeoffs and landings. And we've, we've fired the engines a lot, so um, I think. Um, the, the the reality is that the, that it would not have a significant impact. Um, uh, now, of course, that 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 doesn't mean things don't get uh, delayed from a regulatory standpoint. Um, and we are in a lit lit litigious society, and so there's there's always sort of lawsuits from someone, lawsuit city. Um, so um, now we do have the alternative of the Cape, um, and um, we we actually applied for environmental approval for launch from the Cape uh, a few years ago and received it. So uh, we actually are approved from an environmental standpoint to launch from 39A. Uh, so I guess our worst case scenario is that uh, we would, uh, I don't know, be, be delayed for for six six or six to eight months uh, to build up uh, the, the Cape launch tower and launch from there. Musk announced last year that SpaceX is resuming work on a Starship launch site at Pad 39A, the same location where SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets launched from. In the long run, he said Florida could be used as an operational launch base for Starship, along with offshore platforms. Uh, the future of Star Base, I think, um, it's, it's well suited to be kind of like our um, advanced R&D location. So it's like where we would try out um, new designs and uh, new versions of the rocket. Um, and, and, and then I think probably Cape Kennedy would be our sort of main operational uh, launch site. Um, and then, I don't know, over time, I think there's going to be, we'll have uh, floating spaceports, like ocean spaceports. Uh, we, we, we got these uh, two converted oil rigs that are, that are uh, going to be turned into orbital uh, launch sites, um, and they, they can be moved around the world. The loud noises generated by Starship launches could disturb people close to SpaceX's spaceports, Musk said. That means ocean-going launch platforms could be the way to go in the long run, even providing access to cities for potential high-speed, point-to-point passenger transportation from one side of the Earth to the other. One of the major technical roadblocks for getting Starship running involves the production of Raptor engines. These engines burn methane and liquid oxygen. A cluster of 33 uprated Raptor engines, known as Raptor version 2, will give the super heavy rocket 17 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, more than twice the power of NASA's Saturn V rocket that launched astronauts to the moon. The new version of the Raptor engine is still being test fired in a test stand. It's not quite ready for launch, but Musk said the upgraded Raptor will deliver more thrust, up to 250 tons, and cost half as much to build as the first Raptor engine design. So it's, it's really a, it's a spectacular uh, piece of engineering. Extremely difficult to make and, and succeed. This is, engine has been mind-bogglingly difficult, uh, but it is uh, one of the essential keys to, uh, I mean, it is, it is essential, obviously, to, to making uh, Starship work. Um, It'll be the first uh, full flow stage combustion engine to, to get to orbit. Musk briefly touched on uses for the Starship beyond his long-term vision of Mars settlement. NASA awarded SpaceX a $2.9 billion contract last year to use a derivative of the Starship as a human-rated lander for Artemis moon missions, which aimed to return astronauts to the service of the moon later this decade. There is little mention from Musk about the lunar lander contract, he said the Starship will launch SpaceX's next generation of Starlink internet satellites, and Japanese billionaire Yusaku Meizawa has purchased a ride on a Starship to loop around the moon. SpaceX is developing a capability to refill Starships with cryogenic propellant in orbit using a new fuel tanker design. That's needed before NASA and SpaceX can accomplish the lunar landing mission with Starship. That campaign will require multiple refilling missions, launching as often as every few hours. Shorter duration Starship flights with people can use a similar life support system as SpaceX's Dragon crew capsule. Longer missions, such as those into deep space, will require a more advanced life support system. SpaceX also isn't planning to have an independent launch abort system on the Starship, leaving passengers without a way to escape a failing rocket during the entirety of its climb into orbit. Musk said numerous test flights will help ensure the rocket is safe for humans. 
there'll probably be a few bumps in the road, you know, but uh, we want to iron those out with uh, satellite missions and test missions and, and, uh, and get to a high flight rate and, and then ha have something that's extremely reliable uh, for, for human spaceflight. For now, SpaceX's biggest focus is on getting the gigantic rocket into orbit. Then, Musk said, the use cases for Starship will open up, build it, and they will come.